Um, it was. As uh, city administrator said, um, last year we applied for the same funding source. We had received the support from the city council at the time. Uh, the, count, the county also endorsed it and um, endorsed the findings that WSN had with a pedestrian study. And it really stemmed from the community effort and the National Loon Center Foundation effort to get the Loon Center built here. And the concern was that that will result in a lot more pedestrians around the city of Cross Lake. And you know that there's a lot of pedestrians and there's a lot of pedestrians in conflict with vehicles. So we thought it would exacerbate the problem. <coughs> And this transportation alternatives grant is federal money. It's actually a program that's been offered for actually many years. Um, in our part of Minnesota, it's $1.6 million is available. And uh, our project last year, we had asked for about 410,000. This year, um, we're hoping to learn from our application. One of the things that uh, happens is the evaluators give you good feedback on how you can improve your application. We're taking that to heart. We're going to uh, reevaluate some of it, maybe repackage it a little bit. It's the same exact concept as you see here. I'll run you through it real quick. And I think this year's ask might be around 500,000, which would still represent 80% of the eligible cost. The total cost of the project with what they would contribute, the county would contribute, and the city would be asked to contribute, and maybe even other partners would be closer to 900,000. So, uh, there's some things in this grant that they do not pay for. It's brick and mortar construction, that's it. So any kind of engineering, we would have to partner together using our cost participation policy to fund that. Um, and I think today, uh, before I go through this, it's just we're at the very beginning of it. I think in your packet, you'll see the timeline on page two there. The very first thing we have to do by the end of this month, uh, or the city is the applicant has to do, is um, file a letter of interest. So it's basically telling the selection committee, hey, we're out there, we're still out there, we're, our intent is uh, to apply. And then I believe it's just shortly after the first of the year, the final application is done. So we have a few, or is required to be done. And so we have a few months to repackage, um, build on those uh, good amount of feedback that we got from the selection uh, committee. Um, any questions about that? Is this a 2025 project? Yes, that's a very good question. Mr. Mayor, the money for uh, this grant would be awarded in 2025. So we were talking about a construction project in calendar year and fiscal year 2025. And so we both have, the county and the city and any other partners, we'll have a lot of work to do, but we'll also have a bit of time to gather the funds that we will be required to match the federal money. So um, the Loon Center will probably be in the ground, and the problem, or at least it's supposed to be, 2022 scheduled date is last I heard. So this problem that we're anticipating will probably be there, and uh, if, if it does emerge, and I'm sure sure it will with the pedestrian draw they're talking about. We'll be lucky to have the funds if we're successful. So does this correlate with the reconstruction of the road? It, um, the current reconstruction of the road would be something driven by the city. Would, the county is not proposing a reconstruction? Well, I mean, resurfacing. I think the resurfacing I think the resurfacing is scheduled for 2024. I'd have to look in my book. Yeah, I for sure. Um, it could be if if we are awarded funds and we are awarded funds in the amount that uh, we're able to move forward, we'll look at all of that to tie it all in. There will be some other things associated with the Loon Center that might be uh, of interest to the community that we can incorporate. Um, this will pay for this scope and this scope only. Um, any further questions about the process or? Would See, I, the grant was 500, correct? Correct. The project was 900? Well, last year, and I can show the quickly the... So 
this is actually the grant application and some of the worksheet that we um, had to do. And you can see that uh, the total eligible costs, so there's certain things that the federal money will not pay for, as I mentioned, um, engineering um, and some other costs like that. It's primarily for brick and mortar type stuff. So it won't pay for the contingencies. That's pretty common um, to have a little bit of room because we just more discoveries throughout the project development process. The right of way is not a co um, covered by the, the grant. That'd be 50,000 and here's the engineering, legal and administration costs that would be associated with it. And so here's a subtotal of ineligible costs, eligible costs, and so we'll be asking for 80% of this number, which is that number, and this is the total cost of everything last year. So we've learned some things. Actually, I was uh, recently contacted by the director of the community school that were, was asking for some potential upgrades um, in the vicinity of his facility and community facility. And that might be something that we're able to incorporate here because it's right, the project to be right in front of them. So what you need tonight is a letter of intent? I, I, you know, um, the application is actually from the city. And so, and the county, because we're involved because it's our roadways, but we are the sponsor and the city is technically the ap applicant. And I think when Mike and I discussed this last week, we didn't want to assume that because either the city or the, and the county approved it and supported it last year that we would just move forward based on that. We felt it was important to come before both elected bodies to just check in to make sure. And so if you're approving it, I think the next step is for the city to put that letter of interest in and then we'll move towards the final application after January 1st. Thank you. And the two of you are doing this together. That's correct. correct. That's correct. But, but the whole point here is, you know, if we're interested in doing this project, it's not committing us to anything. It's getting us in the game to be considered for the funds that might be available should we go through with the project at, in that time frame. So right now we're looking for direction from the council. If you're interested in having us do that, we'll work together to get the letter of intent done in a timely manner. And then that at least gets us to the, to the table. Do you to, want a motion on that, Mike? Or yes, we do. Okay. Be considered for that. I'll make a motion that uh, the city puts in a letter of intent for this funding for the uh, uh, pedestrian mobility improvement project. I second it. Okay, we got a second, a motion, and a second. Any other questions on it? Mm -hmm. I think it's a good idea. I think this is great if we can get the money. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ken, thank you for being patient. Thank you. No problem. No problem. I, I love uh, the way to watch government work, so I, it's been a joy. Let's but I'm going to go home to supper. Thank stick you. around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Um, item two in my report is, you know, we're all happy. I think we're all happy with the Loon Lake, Manhattan, or stormwater. Everyone sees up there by Manhattan Beach. Um, the, the pond is done. Um, what we're asking for is an amendment to the original agreement with the Soil and Water Conservation District. The way the grant was laid out, there were $475,000 of grant funds available, and the Conservation District was, was allocating $405,000 of those funds to the city, and they kept $70,000 to retain their costs. Now the city was the project owner and we used Whitseth to help us with that project and we, we ran the project, we, did, we handled all the contracting and that. Um, because we did that, our costs were a little higher, the contract was higher than what, what we had anticipated. Um, that's bad news, the good news is the Soil and Water Conservation District said, hey, because you guys did the work, we didn't have as high of anticipated costs as we thought we would, we'd like to, push what we didn't use in the amount of $30,000 back to the city. And if they don't do that, they give it back to the funding agency and someone else gets it. So the grant amount stays the same. Um, the only thing that's different is we're allowed 
another $30,000 to cover our costs. Um, if you remember, the two areas where we were over on the cost side was the engineering contract that we accepted was about $14,000 more than what we had in the budget for allowable cost, and we paid substantially more for the land acquisition acquisition than we had anticipated. So both things outside of our control. So the request is to approve the amendment one to the original memorandum of understanding, which will allow us to recover $30,000 for the project. I move that we make that change to the MOU so that we could potentially have another $30,000. I'll second it. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. I'm in favor. <laughs> okay, motion carries all in favor. All right, thank you. So I'll get this um, to Melissa Barrick at the Conservation District, and then they'll bring it to their board, and then we're able to submit our final um, payment request for that. So the next item is we talked a lot about, uh, this relates to curbside recycling. And the memo here is to, for you, to, for you guys to see a look at, um, we're, we're requesting a $1,000 licensing fee. And then uh, you can see the attached um, application process for the refuse haulers license application. Okay, so what we're trying to do is get that licensed. Mike, has this got anything to do with recycling? Yes, and Are that's we why we're licensing the homes. Requiring them to recycle. That's correct. Okay. Okay. So you need a motion, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. Okay. To approve the draft letter that's going out and the application and the amount of the fee. Yep. We've already approved that we're going to do the re curbside recycling. Yeah. This is to approve the fee in the application. Okay. What, what was the fee? $1,000. It's $1,000 now. Was it 1000 before? We never We'd never had it before. We never had a license application. Oh, okay. And again, the reason we're doing this to license them is so we can require them to recycle, recycle provide curbside recycling. Okay, I'll make a motion that we that we approve the uh, refuge haulers license and the license fee of one thousand dollars, and uh, that should cover it. I second that. Okay, we got a motion and a second. Any comments? Do you need All the up. draft letter too? Did you want that? Yep. You got that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Right, thank you. Item four, we're removing from the uh, agenda. Is right now we're, we've got a few more um, modifications to make to this with Ideal Township, and we'll bring it back to you at our next meeting. Okay? Okay. So item five is a memo from the clerk to repurchase a cemetery lot. Um, we have a person who purchased one quite a while ago, and they don't need it for whatever reason, and they're asking us to buy it back from them. Pretty much standard stuff with our cemetery. But we do need your approval to do that. I move that we do this repurchase, or let the person repurchase the lot from this person. Okay, we've got a motion, we have a second. I'll second it, and I believe that is a kind of a standard procedure we've always done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It was bought 20, same money 20 years later, so. We got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so the item six is a memo from the clerk um, setting the meeting date to canvas the special election result, or, or canvas the election. It's a special meeting to canvas the elections. Now we know that the election is on November 3rd, and because of mail-in balloting and, and the issues with this year's election, you know, they've got seven days to count the ballots as long as they're postmarked by the 3rd of November. Um, so that really gives us, you know, not a lot of time to 
get the council together and canvass the election and accept the results. Now the interesting thing is if you look at the calendar, um, in that same time frame we have Veterans Day and we have um, deer hunting, the opening of the firearm season. So what we're asking for is a special meeting to um, on the 12th of November, which is a Thursday, to do that, to canvass that election. The other thing we're asking for is on that Monday, um, we're scheduled to have our regular council meeting. And because of where the opening of deer season falls, which I'm sure nobody around here participates in, and Veterans Day is on that Wednesday, we're suggesting we move the regular council meeting to that Thursday and hold it at the same time we canvass the election rather than meeting twice that week. I like the idea of one meeting. Yep. Are we going to have a budget meeting in there any time? That's really uh, at the September 14th meeting the motion was to schedule a budget meeting in November. The next budget meeting in November. So the answer is yes. But we haven't scheduled it yet. That has not been scheduled yet. Okay, so. We can get back to you with some suggested dates. So do you need a motion to move it or just a? Yes, we do. Okay, somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we move uh, the council meeting to the 12th November and then we set a special meeting for the, uh, the council meetings at 7 and the special meetings the same day on the 12th at 2 p.m. We could be both of them next time. Oh, okay. I was going to say, what do we do? Have a special meeting on the 12th or move to regular meeting? And just do it in conjunction all at one time. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. 7 p.m.? Yes. I'm assuming you at night. Okay. Well, I second the motion that we have a combined meeting at 7 p.m. for regular city council and for the uh, election. Um, certification or whatever it is we do there. Okay, so we got a <clears throat> motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Mm -hmm. Water. Yeah, got something to talk. I'll probably do it. Okay, so we're going to move on to item seven then. Uh, before I use a resolution regarding unpaid sewer charges, and this is business as usual, we do this every October. Um, when people, when residents that are hooked up to the sewer system, if the bills are delinquent, we ask the council to certify them um, in the fall for collection on the property taxes. So we'll get that inf information to the county. The other thing we do is we get this letter to, to the delinquent parties. If they come in and, and pay before year end, we um, notify the county that they don't have to assess that. So the request is to authorize us to certify these two items to the county as stated in the memo. I move that we certify these two um, persons for unpaid sewer charges. We certify their bills. Okay, we got a motion. We have a second. Second. Oh. Second by Herzog. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, item eight is uh, for information only. It's my latest update on the total building project. Remember a month or so ago, we were just interested in the, the building only costs for the building we're in right now. Uh, real quickly, uh, this is broken down by the total contract price, the approved change orders, some of which we spoke about tonight. Um, that gets us to a total building only cost to date over on page two of about 3.345 million. And then a lot of questions have come up. We're saying, well, we understand that, but what did the entire project cost? And from a, from a finance perspective, would be the one just before that, DJ. What I look at is how much did we write checks out for? You remember about a year ago, um, actually a year and a month ago, we, we closed on a bond issue of about 3.815 million to pay for this. What that did is that generated about 3.6 million dollars of, of uh, cash for us to use towards this project. Uh, any of the differences in this project, I've got down on the bottom, um, when, when we factor in the, the land that we're, the building sits on right now, the 
road in the sewer we built, um, Mondega Bay Road, and bond acquisition costs, were, we've got a real small difference in one of the um, pay applications that, go over to page two, there you go. Um, so our, our total project cost today was $3,854,184.11. How did we pay for it? Um, we used the net bond proceeds used for project costs of $3,681,688, and we used our own cash to pick up the balance of $172,496.11 to get you to that total. Um, these are the costs as we have today. You know, we've still got a few things left to install, but I factored in what we approved, the budget we approved, and the things are um, like the acoustical panels that we have in the ceiling, some upgrades to the communications and so forth. Okay, so that's for information. If you have any questions, just let me know. There's, n there's no action required on this one. Okay, the next item on there is we talked a lot about this tonight and I wanted to try to do this in a similar format to show, I've had a lot of questions. How much are we spending on the building? Um, where is it going? How And where is the money coming from to pay for it? So, you need to go up. Oh, yep, you got to share. So TJ's going to share, but I'm looking at item F8A in your packet. And it walks you right through the, up on the top, the, the total original project budget. Um, we estimated, you remember back a year ago, we said, how are we going to pay for the building? We're going to pay for it with our own funds. Um, that decision was made well over a year ago. We figured we'd spend about a million four on it. Um, since then we've had some other costs. Um, up on the top we talked about you know the furniture, casework items, a whole bunch of things. And then that was our budgeted number and we said at that time we'd come back to you with a detail of what uh, the fire department needed to put into that building. And so we did that back in August. August 10th. Uh, tonight we talked about what I'm showing you tonight is our best estimate of the items, whether it's a gear locker, a gear dryer. We talked about the gear dryer that we're, we're going to use some of the CARES Act money for, the 8260 about right in the smack middle of that page. Um, we're going to need some kitchen cabinets, some tables and chairs, some AV equipment, some furniture, um, furniture for the radio room, and some window shades. So what I've tried to do is track those other items and then uh, show them where we're at as compared to the original budget. Um, right about in the middle of the page, whether we want to call it uh, black insulation or mold or rot or, or mitigation damages, these are the same numbers that high tech had provided us uh, um, back in July and August that the council approved in concept for budgeting purposes of the 372.6. You know, we, we spent a little bit of time talking about that um, tonight. Now towards the bottom we have the change orders that you approved and I've given you two options here. The change orders depending on which option you chose for the um, the attic fire stop. attic stop, the fire stops in the attic or if you decided to go with the new well. So what we'll do is um, each time we meet, we'll, we'll update that with the actual numbers as they become available. So there's no action required on that. That's just for your information, okay? The last item I have is some information on the local option sales tax. Um, and everybody's interested in that. Now, when we last talked about local option sales tax, uh, Council Member Andrews and Mayor Nevin and myself, we all went down to, remember the legislator Late of day, we went down and, and testified in front of the House Committee and Finance Committee at the House down in St. Paul. Um, right after that, uh, things pretty much came to a screeching halt because of the COVID-19 pandemic, so it stopped. At that time, there were 20 cities, including ourselves, about 20 cities, that were looking for a, a local option sales tax. Um, they didn't get any further than we did. In fact, we didn't even get to meet with the Senate. The information we left with from that meeting said um, we're going to be able to do this at some point in the future, 
but we're going to change the rules. They, the legislature at that time was talking about a number of rule changes and they had quite a few discussions on that during the, the 2020 session, but they didn't make any changes from since we first applied. So I did have a conversation with Gary Carlson at the League of Minnesota Cities that was helping us with that process. And he said, you know what? Um, if you're still interested in sales tax, you need to basically start over with it. And you've got till January 31st to get your plans in order and your request. And so if the council is interested um, with that, remember we were looking at generating a local option sales tax to help pay for some infrastructure projects. We can get so they want to remember back this together. coming January? Well, that's the deadline for the next session where it would be discussed. And then we can decide when we would have the referendum. If it's an off cycle year, we'd have to do the election on our own referendum. Um, which isn't always recommended. Um, it really, we'll have to see where it goes if they make some right, changes. It's with two the, years out till the election. Update. For the general January election, yeah. January 31st, we could do our own referendum on our own. Don't know if we'd be ready to do that or if that would be a wise decision, but we'd find out. Well, we might as well, I don't know. You know, and that, I that, it. Yeah, and, and that is why we put a, a, a placeholder in the budget for we're probably going to need some help with that process. We're just not sure what level of assistance we might need in getting that message out so we can have a successful project. So if you want us to move forward with it, I'll pull our group back together and we'll get going on it. You want a motion for that or just a consensus? Yeah, we haven't. We haven't really stopped, so I would say, yeah, let's bring it back to life and get rolling. I'll second that motion. Any other discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. I'm done. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. Okay, Chief. Good evening. Just a couple quick things. Uh, first off, the mm -hmm. first memo you, you have is regarding uh, probationary status of Officer Adam Lane. We hired back in March. His probationary period ended uh, September 9th. Uh, Adam's been doing some great work for us. Uh, he's taken a lot of drugs off the street uh, in his short time here, and he's also kind of, well, I can't really get into it too much, but uh, located a burglary suspect for burglaries that happened outside of Cross Lake. So it helped out the county with some of that. So if we could get a motion on removing him from probation to full-time status, that'd be great. I so move. I'll second that. Got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion I'm, carries. I'm, I'm Thank gathering you. his experiences showed. His experience is showing, yep. It's a little quieter here than it was in Bismarck, apparently. I would but say a lot quieter. He's still, <laughs> still making it happen. Uh, secondly, uh, we've got the two new squads. They're going to be ready to go here within a couple of weeks. Um, and we will be selling the 2014 Ford Taurus and the 2016 Ford Explorer. Um, Again, we put those on govdeals.com, which is where we've sold uh, items before. The other thing that I would like to take a look at is selling our radar trailer. I think the radar trailer was donated to us in 2007, 2009, somewhere back then. Isn't that right, Tom? Um, because three years ago we bought the radar signs, and we have those located throughout the city, we move them around. We don't need the radar trailer anymore. It's cumbersome, it's made for bigger roads. And what I'd like to do with that is uh, make it uh, the, whatever we get out of that sale. And I don't know if we'll get 1,500, I don't know if we'll get 3,500. I have no idea what we'll get out of that trailer. But I'd like to apply those uh, monies to the purchase and setup of a uh, enclosed trailer, six by 10 trailer that we would use for range 
um, all our range equipment, uh, and I can explain that here in a second. And uh, but that that's what I would be looking at uh, that money from that Raider trailer going to. So if I could get a motion for that. So where do you go? You guys go out. Uh, Wanabo, or something, go shoot, or? we use the County Road 103 pit, Wanabo's pit. He allows us to go down there and shoot. Okay. So that's where we do all our qualifications. We also will utilize Bill's gun shop. If the, the officers want to go out and practice, we'll you know, send them down there and let them practice. We've used the county's range, and you know it's just to get the whole department to move down there, it's a little more difficult. So it's been easy to do it right on 103, and we appreciate Wanda Boats letting us use that. I'll okay. make a motion to approve the request to declare the 2014 Ford sedan and the 2016 Ford SUV and the radar trailer as surplus and to sell it, and the proceeds from the radar trailer to be applied to a enclosed trailer for firearms and targets and stands. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Anything else on it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. So last, um, with the COVID uh, stuff happening, we haven't used a lot of our training expenses. So, because uh, we're doing a lot of our stuff online, so we're not going and staying in hotels, we're not going to conferences like we normally would. Uh, I don't say that's a good thing, because uh, you don't get as much out of sitting in front of a computer screen. But, so what I decided to do was take some of our training expenses and purchase eight steel silhouette targets from American Steel Supply in Brainerd. And they were going to be a cost of $160 a piece. Well, Chris and Alicia Brownell, the owners of um, American Steel Supply, gave us a deal on them. They were going to give them to us for $80 a piece. They were going to give them to us for half off, which was wonderful. We were happy as could be with that. Well, in the meantime, somebody else came in, an anonymous donor, and bought the whole thing for us. So we got eight steel targets donated uh, for the police department, which is, I hate to say it, that it's going to make training a little more fun, but it's going to make it more fun. And it's going to make it better and keep the guys more enter entertained with uh, going out and doing this stuff. With that being said, that's where we came up with the idea of getting the trailer. So I've been researching, uh, getting donations to have a trailer monies for a trailer donated. I'm waiting to hear uh, later on this week if, if we get those monies. So if we do get that, that's where I'm going to be lo uh, looking at setting up that trailer and putting a bench in it so we can take all our stuff out, we can work on our guns, because we're normally working on them in the back of the squads. And it really, you know, if you get a jam, if you get something that's wrong with it, this will allow us to carry everything all at once, otherwise we're taking three or four squads and packing them up with all our stands and everything and going out to the place. So it'll all be in one place. So that's my explanation on the steel trailers, or on steel signs. If we could get a uh, motion to accept the donation, that'd be great. Where do you park that trailer, Eric? In that, that will be in the garage down at Cold Storage. Right, Ted? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Only if he gets to go along shooting. Yeah, he can probably go. He, according to him, he can show us how. You wouldn't make much. I make a move that we accept the donation of the uh, steel signs. I'll second that motion. Right, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Yep, thank um, you. Council Member. Here's all, thank you for bringing the, the money back into the EOC. Uh, you know, finding out that the county is interested in having um, something up north and we've got the facility downstairs. You know, back when it was being uh, uh, thought process, uh, the casework got taken out and 
So we don't have anything down there right now. So being able to set that up, and we've already used it a couple times for storms. Uh, so we need to we need to get moving on that. I appreciate. It. Thank you. Yeah. All right, TJ. Good evening, Mayor Council. Uh, the first item I have for you is in regards to a fridge that I would like to mark as surplus and sell it on Gov's, Gov sales or wherever we put our surplus Gov deals. Um, this fridge has since been replaced um, and is now sitting in our garage taking up space. We'd like to mark it as surplus and get some money back from it. I move you sell the refrigerator online, get rid of it. I second it. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Next item, um, Bolton Subdivision. This is a park dedication recommendation. Um, the Cross Lake Park and Library Commission met on September 23rd, in which we discussed the Bolton Subdivision. Um, the outcome of that, we request to accept cash in lieu of land for that subdivision. I Sabu, we agree to take cash instead of land. Okay, we got a motion. Do we have a second on it? I'll second it. Second, is that two? How much cash? Two, three thousand? Must be two, two lots. Two units? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Third item plow estimate for the park truck. Um, there's two separate quotes, but they both coincide with each other. The second one there with the $315.80 is just the rubber deflectors that are placed on top of the plow to de deflect the snow from hitting the front windshield. So um, I'm requesting that we accept this quote for the new park truck. Is this for the new truck? Correct. Do you have that the yet? The new truck? No, because no. I was waiting for... Some direction from the council on. Is there a snow plow in the budget for that truck? It was a park truck and a plow for in the 2021 budget, yes. In the 2020 budget? 2021. This is going to be accepted for, this was in the 2021 budget, but I wanted to get approved for 2021 when we get the truck so we can get it right away and put it on. Okay. But, the, but the truck is not going to be in the 21 budget anymore. Because it's Cause coming it's out of the COVID funds. COVID. Correct? The plow did. Or the truck did. The truck did. The truck did. They're not going to approve the snow plow for COVID. No, that's funds. why I'm asking tonight so <laughs> we can. Okay, but I guess I'm trying to figure out where is the money coming from? That would be coming from the 2021. 2021. And that is it. That is in there at this time. How much is in there, TJ? Is it 4,500 in the 2021, or is it 70? It was the full price for the truck. But since we're taking no, 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 the plow, the plow, yeah. What's well, the 7,544 and 80 cents? Okay. That's what the plow fully installed for the new truck. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm still a little behind on that one. How much money was in the 21 budget for the for the truck and the plow both? Forty-one thousand dollars. Okay, so we would only be reducing the budget by the 37 or whatever it was. 33. 33. Okay, so then the seven is still there. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm I'm with it now. Thank you. Um, I'll make a motion. We purchase the. The uh, work to be done to get the plow and uh, get it mounted. I second it. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Motion carries. Next agenda item um, the personnel committee met this morning to discuss uh, my part time staff and cleaning service at the community center. Um, it was the consensus of the personnel committee um, to recommend. Uh, $12 per hour for the part-time staff from the original or existing 10 and hire a cleaning service at a cost of $22,575 annually and this would be effective immediately. 
I think a little bit on discussion for, for yep. people. So, so breaking that down, it's two and a half two hours, and a half hours. five days a week for cleaning, is that correct? Correct. Two and a half hours a day for five days. <coughs> and I think they have 35, 3,500 3, hours of part-time work. Part-time work. Pre-COVID. Pre-COVID. Normal hours. 2,600 hours. Yeah. I can there put are, it on the screen here. Well, you might want to just to break it down, but the cleaning is going to make it a lot easier to hire somebody to work in the park and rec, in the library, or in the community center. So that's what we looked at this morning. What we looked at as well is our previous hours. You see on the left-hand side, um, with my part-time staff, they work 3,500 hours, just over with our tentative new hours that we want to go back to when we get the appropriate staffing, cuts that down to just under 2,500. So if you look at what we were paying $10 per hour underneath the old hours, and you look at $12 per, hours, or per hour underneath the tentative new hours, it's actually cheaper. TJ, is this money already in your budget or is this going to be extra money you need? The cleaning would be extra. Thanks. So what he's trying to do is get one or two good part-time employees instead of nine. Yeah, right. what we're looking at is, yeah, when we make our schedule, and rather than writing it in pencil, as I would like to say, putting it in pen, um, having someone more reliable and taking that cleaning service or that cleaning duties off my part-time staff, because you look on the other side of the coin, I mean, you come in and you expect service at the front desk of the community center, and my part-time staff has been cleaning, mopping, doing whatever they need to do for that two and a half hours. So that would alleviate that problem. So, sounds good. Made sense to me. It did to me too at the meeting. I'll make a motion. And where's the money coming from for this? COVID. <laughs> <laughs> what bank is that in? It's really <laughs> growing. We haven't used our full budget for the part-time staff right now, so we'll retool that budget and we can come back to you. Um, any excess that we would need to cover that would have to come out of the unrestricted funds. I remember um, in the parks and rec department, we have you know essentially two full-time people there, and we wanted to get uh, a good track record through at least September to find out what level of effort um, we were spending in in the library so we're going to do an allocation yet this fall of, of uh, some salaries to push those salaries over into the uh, um, library because right now they're sitting in parks and rec and we'll take another look at that and see what we're going to find but we think it'll it should be close to flat if it isn't, it, it shouldn't be a huge number. But we're shutting down part two earlier this year. You've got to have some reserves from yeah. what you had. When were you going to start this, next year? Or? I'd like to start it effective immediately. I think it's a, good, a really good idea. I just was asking where the money was coming from, that's all. Uh, part, part of the, the, the issue TJ's having with, with attracting and keeping staff is is it a fair statement to say most of your part-time staff were were not college-age kids? Yes, that is correct. They're mostly retired yep. people, um, and so we we think it it would be a better fit to have the cleaning hired out so that we could cover the front desk hours. Um, we have the the cleaning service hired out for the rest of our buildings, and we felt we wanted to re basically. TJ's time up and, and Jane's time, you know, instead of having them cleaning toilets, we'd like them coming up with park plans and designs and, and programs and, and uh, use the right mix of, of labor for, for the cleaning side of things. I'll make a motion to approve the recommendation to hire a cleaning service at the community center and to increase part-time wages to $12 per hour. I second that motion. Okay, we got a motion, second. Any other discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries, all in favor. Thank you. My last item here is from a quote from Woodseth. I'm sorry for the surprise, it just got to me yesterday. Um, 
during the planning for South Bay Park discussions with the Commission and uh, with Corinne from the Corps, um, before we take our plan to the Corps, they are requesting um, some sort of master plan or some sort of conceptual drawing so they can see where we would like to place our amenities that we're requesting to put into that park. So within the quote here, we flip through um, on the second page there, what they have proposed um, for this conceptual drawing is $3,600. And just to take a picture at the example diagram on the third page, and just for everyone's awareness, this is not our plan. This was just an example that they drew up for Niswa. Um, this drawing here would be separate from this drawing over to the left of the four pictures. So we break that down even farther. It depends on what you as the council would like to see in this conceptual drawing. The concept site plan is the bigger illustration and the exterior renderings are the separate four pictures on the left hand side. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, is that correct? So if we want to have a very detailed master plan, we would go with both. If we would just like to see the um, concept site plan, which is the big picture there, it would knock it down um, to just $1,600.80, or $1,680. So the exterior renderings on the left-hand side would add an additional 16 hours. But I'm just wondering right now, what do we want to do? Do we want to take that next step and, and I think we should just have a conceptual drawing one step at a time. Okay. Uh, actually, TJ and I talked about this a little bit before the meeting. And Dave, you and I were in that first meeting with mm -hmm. Corinne, mm -hmm. and you are have a group together at the Park and Rec that are going to work with Mike, I guess, Angla. Yeah. No, I asked TJ to ask both of us to be go to that meeting too and just give good direction. And the whole goal behind tonight, I know it's surprising the council, I'm sorry about that, but I really want to push this ahead so we can meet with that group and I can meet with the commission and hopefully have a concrete plan and have a, a master plan by the next council meeting. So then we can keep the ball rolling and I can eventually um, show this to the core. And our goal, my goal, is to have this plan done and accepted by year end. Where are we? Where are we with the indigenous people checking the area? That has not been. I have not gotten that quote back yet. Um, that's going to have to be done next year, though. So really, what I'm looking for is, I, I guess it can't get accepted by the court, but I want all the information besides the archaeological study ready. So when that archaeological study is done, we can get the ball rolling. So a concept. I mean, that's a good idea. Put some thoughts down. Yeah. So, yeah. You need a motion on that? I do. Okay. And I would need a motion if we want to go with a full 3600 or if we want to just have them develop the concept site plan. In talking to Corrine, she said the contract that we have, the lease that we have, is for low impact from the city of Cross Lake with the core property. I would probably go with the 1600. I'm also told that what you have to do for an archaeological survey is very different whether you're digging in the ground or you're just putting something on the top of the ground. So um, anyway, I would probably propose the 1600. I don't, you know, they're, they're not talking about uh, docks and amphitheaters and things, at least in terms of what Corrine said was in the, the lease. And what this concept plan will help is after we have the archaeological study pending if we do find some sort of archaeological artifact we can directly locate where that is on our concept plan and say our picnic table is located there okay we can go right 10 feet left 10 feet and then we can adjust that on that plan so if they find something it's not a stop it's just right. working around it correct i'll second uh, john's motion at 1600 that conceptual drawing it would be 1680 just, that be his motion, but 1, just to be, yeah. 
So do we have to add anything about working with the park and rec group or anything, or that'll just take place? That'll just, I'll just send out that invite and we'll, I'll orchestrate that. A little side question on that. When they did the Perkin Roads archeological study, did they find anything? Not to my knowledge. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. This may be a bit different since it is located next to the water, but yeah. our fingers are crossed. But okay, like Marcia said, I mean, we'd be able to move the picnic tables and we're around it unless it's all over the place then we're correct done so we got a motion and a second anybody else have anything all in favor aye aye, aye. hey tj motion. stay there i'd like to give jane and tj kudos for the first pickleball tournament that he pulled off during cross lake Day. a lot of people in a lot of rain that he had to work around <laughs> A Let's one day deal turned into two days. So. It can only go up from here. There was a lot of challenges that we faced, but it'll only improve from here. Hopefully next year there's no rain that interferes. <laughs> yep. Yep. Thank Very you. good. All TJ, right. thank you. You had a little challenge with the net student, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, another side story there. Um, our three additional pickleball nets that were bought by the donations that we accepted last meeting, they were supposed to be delivered on Tuesday. And they were, then they were supposed to be delivered on Wednesday, called in on Thursday. Oh, yep, they're going to be in Duluth. I was expecting to go up to Duluth on Friday in advance of the Saturday tournament. Called in Friday morning, they were down in Egan. So I got, had the joy of taking a trailer down to Egan to pick up the nets and come up in advance of the tournament. Everything worked out, and everyone had fun. So. What a yeah. mess. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, you TJ. All right, Ted, what do you got going on? Oh, we got a couple pay requests. Uh, Dave, do you want to take this one since you prepared it? Thank you, Dave Rees, Woodsmith. First item on your agenda of Public Works is the final pay request from Borden Excavating for Perkins Road. The amount that you're approving tonight would be Sixty-seven thousand six hundred twelve dollars and fifty-four cents. This is the final pay request with release of all retainage. Uh, we've received all of the final submittals, with the exception of the IC one thirty-four forms. So, like we did with RL Larson, we ask for your approval of this final pay request, and city staff can cut the check when they receive that. Those items. It's all done? Yeah. I have not been down there, unfortunately. Okay. Job came in at 101.7% of the estimated cost, so that sounds right. pretty close. Yeah, they did a little more yeah. work with common excavation and needed some more sand borrow hauled in because there was more topsoil. So in all, the project was about uh, uh, 8,000 bucks over the bid amount um, you ended up with a topsoil pile out there that's been seeded, so you've got that. Good. Yeah. That's good. And you're, you and Ted are happy? I think it turned out to be an excellent project. Okay. Yeah. Then I'll move to pay board and excavating incorporated $67,612.54. I'll Final second payment. that. Okay. We've got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All in favor? Um, Mr. Mayor, the next one, if we're going to get going with the 2001 road projects, we need to get under contract with WSN to get going on our projects. So a motion was made by Tom Swenson, seconded by Nick, Mick Cheetah, to approve or to recommend to the City Council authorize an initiation and preliminary assessment pro process which means the city authorizes WSN to prepare the required reports necessary for cost-effective feasibility of the projects, the proposed improvements and assessments following the 2000, 2021 road project. Um, so we have an estimated cost of $1,433,850 for next year. That includes uh, seal coating the two roads that we did this year, bituminous overlay of whitefish, hilltop, Woodland and Cool Haven Lane, a reconstruct of Wildwood Ranch, and remember that was one project that got tabled this last go around, Rushmore Boulevard, 
Harbor Lane and Birch Narrows. So if we're going to get going on this, we need to get under contract and move forward with the projects. Anything to so add what's that bond like for that? Say that again, please. Bond or how do you finance that? Yeah, and, and that's a good question. And, and what we were looking at with, with the special assessment bond is in the budget that we were, we've been talking about, the way that we were planning to finance that um, was about about a million dollars of special assessment bonds. We were levying a portion of it, and we had carried over some money from Wildman Ranch Drive that we levied for that we didn't use. Um, my preliminary numbers show that this estimate is within about twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars of of what is currently in the budget. So I would adjust our pay twenty-one budget to these numbers. And what we're really looking at is, if you think about it, we have a fire truck that we're looking at either issuing a certificate for or a bond. If we're doing a special assessment bond for this, we can get that paperwork done. And what I would suggest in talking with our bond advisor is if we're doing a special assessment bond, we, would do, we wouldn't do an equipment certificate, we'd do a combined issue. We'd do a larger issue and get a better rate on our bonds and we'd, we'd split the uh, maturities on that so the, so the fire truck portion of it would be paid off typically before the road. Um, we need to get going on that now rather than uh, waiting till December or January to do that because the, the idea here is twofold. One is to get the project designed, engineered, um, the assessments established, the hearings, the hearings done and the financing package put in place in order for us to obtain favorable bidding you know, early this spring. We don't want to be doing this in June or July. Um, the other thing this does, if we time this right, we can uh, combine, like I mentioned earlier, the financing for the um, fire truck that we're replacing um, and do a combined issue. As, you, as you've heard, rates are very favorable right now. We can get all that done this fall. And again, what we don't want to have happen is put dollars in the levy for this, for the road project, assuming we're going to issue bonds, and then change our mind in the spring. We want to etch base, essentially approve this portion of the budget for next year, right now, and get rolling with it. That, that is the request, correct? Yes. Okay. And that was a direction from the, call, from the commission. I, I agree with that, and I'd be willing to make a motion that we look at this uh, word projects and uh, approve it as submitted by Public Works Commission. I'll second that. I have a, I have a question. Just, okay. I'm not against it. I'm just I'm asking about um, engineering and specs and everything is going to be ready to go to bid in the spring then? That's our goal. Early as soon as we can in the spring. Yeah. If we get January, February, that'd be fantastic. That's how you get your good bids. Is that the earlier the better? Yes. Okay. Just that question. Dave Reese, you're probably already looking. You're probably already looking at uh, frozen ground to do the surveying work at this date right That's now. That's right. Correct? So, the, with the special assessments, which we're following your adopted assessment policy, will be getting some quotes from uh, an appraiser to do benefit opinions of the ones that will be assessed. Everything will be accessible except for the seal codes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, that's a, that process takes time to hold the hearings. You know, it takes several months to go through. And uh, each step of the way, there all have to be um, resolutions uh, adopted by the city council by a four-fifths vote. These will be city-initiated projects. So the Public Works Department agreed that you're going to do assessments on overlays. That was it, was, it was already in our new policy. Right. We had not followed through with that policy. We were going on past practices. And that was a recommendation, if you remember, yep. no, I do. to do that. So. And is the engineering included in these prices?
Okay, so we got a motion and a second, I believe. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you all. Last one is we have another pay request from D. Chantel for the stormwater project up on Manhattan. Okay. Okay, this is the final pay request for D. Chantel excavating for the water quality project. And it's actually the release of the retainage? Yes, for the most part, it's um, amount due $10,000. Yeah. So, Dave, what is the agreement on the plants that they planted there? Is there a guarantee of growth or anything? A or? year. Pardon? One year. Okay. Can I ask a question, Mayor? Sure. But do we have um, good instructions on what we're supposed to do to clean this thing? There's, uh, there, you'd have the to plan. have a vac truck, uh -huh. which that was discussed in the development of the project. Um, I think t during the uh, discussions, there's um, some communities that get together to um, share a vehicle at certain times of the year when they clean storm sewers and so forth. But you'd have to basically pull the sediments that these structures are trapping out every couple of years. And, and then the pond the itself this coming would have to be. My, my initial reaction is this the spring. We'll pull the lids, we'll check and see what's there. Mm -hmm. See what we, we accumulate. It was every couple of years, but we were told that we have to clean these. But we'll check on the spring, make an evaluation. If they have to, we'll call in one of the vacuum trucks to suck them out and clean them out. That was part of our agreement with the soil and water, too. Yep, all right. Yep. Okay, so somebody want to make a motion on that? Pay 10000 Yes, I'll make a motion to approve the final $10,000 payment to DeChantel Excavating. I'll second it. Okay, a motion and a second. To, you know, I live right by there, so I drive that by them all the time, but... I kind of wish there was a way we could get some water out of that pond to water those trees. They put some nice trees in there. That you can't realize that's the water level of the lake. No, no, I know. But I mean, just to irrigate them so that they grow. Oh, okay. So, I don't you know. They got a 50% chance of making it if nothing is done. So we'll see. Maybe. But anyway, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries, all in favor. Mr. Mayor, the police chief just had a really good idea. We'll just take Tripp's new ladder truck and we'll water him with that. Yeah. <laughs> good idea, Eric. Making friends again. Yep. Okay, we have public forum. No action will be taken on any of the issues raised. If appropriate, the issue will be placed on the agenda of future council meetings. Speaker must state their name, address. Each speaker is given three minute time limit. Does anybody have anything? Okay, it doesn't look like it, so we'll close public forum. Brad, city attorney report. Those are, uh, we had signed five assessment agreements with landowners for the Perkins Road project before the project happened. And so this is more of a procedural step. Three, of the, there's only uh, two listed because the other three paid in cash. So these two, they've already signed contracts to have it be assessed. This is just the final certification to put it in the tax rolls for 21. So do you need two motions, two separate or one? If you vote yes. the same, it could be one motion. Hmm. Okay, does somebody want to make a motion on that? I'll make a motion to certify uh, the two assessments uh, presented to us. Fourteen thousand fifty and thirty-six thousand nine seventy-five for Perkins Road. Second. Okay, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Aye. Motion carries. All in favor. Okay, that's it, Brad. Yeah. Any new business? I, I have. Um, I would like to have that uh, budget meeting scheduled for November, if we could. And um, after you get done, I don't know when you'll get done with um, the budget adjustments to provide us with a updated budget. I guess that's something that you would only know, Mike. I mean, we made adjustments tonight, and we talked about park and rec wages, and you had to take out the snow plow truck and the pickup and all that good kind of stuff. So when could you have that all done, and when can we have a, a budget meeting? I think given uh, the scheduling, we can, I can give you a budget update on the if we did a special meeting the week after our um, November meeting, the twentieth or something, nineteenth. Yeah. That'll be the nineteenth. Yeah. yeah. Sure, and I can get all the known changes out to the council. I should be able to get that well in advance. I've got a pretty good, uh, actually, a really good mapping system of here's where we started and here's what we changed and here's the impact do you like to do it in the, the afternoon or the morning I'm, I'm fine you got nothing going on in November thank goodness let's put it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon then is it the 19th is I that the day so moved Okay, we've got a motion and a second for a meeting on the 19th at 2 p.m. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I have one other thing. Okay. Sorry. Um, maintenance on buildings. Whose job is it and uh, is it in a job description? Who's responsible for maintenance of our buildings? I guess I just want to make sure that, that there's something out there because the Apparently, the last building wasn't maintained very well, so don't want that to happen here. Uh, just wondered who's in that position and responsible. And I'd like to add to Marsh is that there be a budget attached to it. The Public Works has always assumed that. I'm not pointing fingers, just want to know where to go. Well, I'm taking exception to how you said it. Because you're, you're aiming it at me. It's my job, under my job description, to do the, the public buildings. I inherited a building that was already bad. And a lot of problems I brought up to that gentleman right there. And there's other people who can testify it, and he wouldn't do anything about them. So he's to blame for some of this just as okay, much as I am. I'm not pointing to Well, you that. are. I just want to know who's responsible and what job, if, is it in the job description? So that we My job description public Okay. So some of your maintenance people would, or your... Our staff team can put buildings out, we see maintenance on the building. Because you agree there was a maintenance issue in that building. There was problems okay. in that building the way it was built in the day one. So I guess the other thing that I would follow up with that on is that your guys, one way or another, got a no take care of that equipment. I mean, it's a little more sophisticated and whatever, so. Probably the heating and whatever, but. Okay. Is there any old business? Move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Aaron. Anybody second that? Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye.